I know for me, the, the thing that turned me on to boxing is that I watched, I was a kid and I saw a movie called Flesh and Fury. It was a boxing movie. Tony Curtis was a fighter. He looked terrific, but he was a handsome guy. He dressed nice. And that was impressionable for me. Yeah. My grandfather would take me to Stillman's, and I met everybody. So I started. And uh, uh, I was training at the YMCA, teaching myself. There was a couple of guys. Ray Dietrich was there. He was a light heavyweight. He taught me this. And then there was a guy named Bushing, who I found out was an FBI agent. He taught me, but my uncle Leo told me the most important part. He fought in the army. The most important part is the jab. So I learned this and that. So one day I'm hitting a heavy bag, and, and Tony Gagliato, um, who was a heavyweight, yeah, him, yeah. yeah, he says, you know, he says, I, I, you, you need to come to this gym. So I went to this gym, Jimmy Trek's gym in, 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 on Roebling Street. It was called the Roebling Gym. And I met Joe Franco and Chick Angeloni. And they... They took, they taught me everything. They were banano guys, but they were, they were gentlemen, you know. I boxed with everybody. I mean, Carmine Fury, Danny Juvenelli. I was 15, 16, 15 years old. And they all, they all worked with me, helped me this and that. Uh, Clay Thomas was a fucking beast. He was um, Hurricane Carter Spar. He was a light heavyweight. I was 40, 45 pounds. I learned to, uh, to, to be responsible. You had to do road work, do everything right. And uh, I was very successful. I, uh, I, I fought, I, I won seven fights in a row, and I was the only Golden Globe champion to make Madison Square Garden's 50 greatest moment. I had 1,800 people. We sold tickets in the final. The Garden, there was 15,000 people in the Garden, 15,000 people. And um, I was 17, and the, um, how can I say it, uh, all of a sudden I felt I was somebody. These are the things that I can remember. I remember I'm going to fight as hard as I can for as long as I can, and I hope I win. And then a funny thing came to me, and then now I'm trying to loosen up a little bit. They put the spotlight on you. I said, oh, you know, and all of a sudden, I, I, I was somebody, you know. So, and, and that's a wonderful feeling. The only time I got beat was in the Army. I got beat by a guy, I told you, George Leach. I was, and I'm not making excuses, I'm just telling the facts. He, I was 18, and he, and he was five-time Gold Bowl Glove champion. And, and then I, I, was, I fought in, in a, a, a place in Germany where they had Germans and Americans back and forth, and I fought an American guy, and I got stopped, and then I won. Uh, I won seventh Army champion, V Corps champion. Then I was. I. They sent me back to the states to. A fight. I was on the All Army team, and I saw some great, great fighters, uh, and then I got sick with all that. And, but um, it's the the effort. Uh, I try to teach that the effort. I mean, you just if this is what you want to do, if you don't do it right, then you, I'm not going to go someplace else. I became a trainer, and uh, I started in 1965. I was partners with a guy named Mario Maselli. It, it's a sport that, 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 it's the garbage around the sport, but the fight is, uh, Marvelous, beautiful fucking people, man. I mean, I had a gym for almost 30 years, and, and you just see them, they come in off the street, we have some fun, we fool around. Michael Delarue was a kid I had. He couldn't read, he couldn't write. I used to say, didn't you go to school? He said, no, I stayed on the bus. They wanted, I didn't have to go to school, I just sat, stayed on the bus all day. <laughs> and he looked like James Cagney. And, uh, but you know, <laughs> You just love to help these kids. I, I was taught a very unbelievable lesson. Joey Giardello, I was a big fan of his. You know, I would work in a couple, one or two times. I was in Stillman's. He would fuck around with him, do this, that. But so he gets beat to death, and I felt so bad. I was like 14 or 15. And I said, geez, I can't wait to see this guy. I want to see. 
and he's, he, he, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in Stillman's, and he's coming up the stairs. I said, Joey, I, I, he says, Tommy, I'm fine. He said, I did the best I can. I'll kill him the next time. Don't. And I, that attitude stayed with me. I had, I had some great fighters that came to the gym. I mean, I had Mike McCallum, Doug DeWitt, Donnie Lolan, uh, Breelin, Michael Bent. I had, if I could have uh, filmed the sparring matches at my gym, I'd be a trillionaire today. But they were just, and they all had different personalities. One guy you couldn't stop when you said, you do, you, you relax, you're doing too much, you're going to wear yourself out. He, he would just work until he would drop because he, ha he was just insecure. The kid was just insecure. I mean, he fought everybody. Uh, he, was, he became a WBO uh, middleweight champion, but he fought all the big guys. and uh, about? The wit. Oh, okay. And McCallum. <laughs> I, I used to, I, me and Joe Gallo trained McCallum in the gym because, um, but we never worked any of his fights. I might, I might have worked one of his fights. But uh, he was the, uh, uh, the frugal, they said. So Joe Gallo says, what the fuck is frugal? I said, wait a minute. I said, what do you mean, what is frugal? He's cheap. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tommy Gallagher and Bobby Cassidy Jr. You all have no idea what these people mean to me. You taught me what it takes to be a man or not. To be a world champion, nobody did for me in boxing, but Tommy Gallagher and Bobby Cassidy did for me. I was very proud. I, the two guys that, that I took to the title was um, Doug DeWitt and Donnie, Donnie Lolan. But I, you know, what I was proud of is that I actually put that fight together, the Lolan and Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, all Donnie wanted to do was make a million dollars. So I went down to Baltimore. Actually, Bobby Goodman helped me set up, and, and um, Clancy, Bill Clancy helped me set up to talk to somebody down in Maryland as well. Was it Mike Trainer? No, it was somebody who got to Mike Trainer. Okay. Right. So I went down, we talked about it, and I said, look, what, what, you're going to be you're going to fight for two titles, the first time in history. I says, you know, you're going to, we're going to make a lot of money. I didn't know that, but when actually we did. We had $21 million in the bank before we sold the ticket. Wow. $21 million. So, so I said, make this a six-round fight. Donnie, listen to me. Just work your ass off for six rounds. And then Frazier came up to the camp, and he said, Tommy, just think of Joe Fraser, and that's what, that's exactly right. That, as I said, Donnie, I know there's different styles, this and that, but I said, the, the rougher that you get, we win this easy, and then you just cru cruise the rest. He lost, he got hit in the throat, that's what, I mean. Yeah, I that, yeah. yeah so, so, but, um, yeah. but he made a lot of money. It's a, a marriage of the fighter, the trainer, the manager, and 99% of the stuff was great. You know, I met Sonny in the 1959. And he was in the, he was, he had Danny Juvenelli then. And um, he, he knew Joe Franco and, and after I won, he said, wow, he never, never tried to move me or anything. Or just, he said, wow, that was a great fight, good for God bless you. He used to come to the gym to relax. And, and, and I had a hard time understanding that. And you could see him, he'd take a deep breath, he'd sit down in the chair. One guy would work out, this guy, that guy. He said, I could go fight, this, that, and the other thing. He never said, you know, um, I'd like to talk to this kid. He never did that or anything. He just... He just said, dude, that kid could fight a little. There's a teacher in Franklin K. Lane, I don't know if he's still alive, he said, the three promising gentlemen I ever had was John, John Gotti, uh, Johnny Koenig, and Tommy Gallagher. <laughs> Johnny Gotti was, was talk the shit, but he was a gangster. He was a gambler and a Shylock. I used to meet him, call for him on, he lived on Dean Street. 
and we used to go to Pick and Avenue shopping. And um, he, he was almost like a clone of uh, Sonny, in a sense, is that he, I'm committed to this, um, and I'm going to do the best I can to be the... He probably could have been anything that he wanted, to be honest with you. I mean, he, he, he really could have. Uh, he, uh, I just know him as a different person. Sure. He, was, he was a brilliant guy. He was fucking sharp. I used to find envelopes when, when jo Johnny Gotti would come up to the gym by himself and sit down and talk boxing, this and that. I always found an envelope, $200. Sonny, the same thing. I found envelopes in the drawer. And he said, and, and I would buy this, I would buy that for the kids, and, and you know, for equipment. All these guys that were in the mob that I knew would, well, <laughs> it sounds crazy, but they were gentlemen. 